according to the affected side. Okay, so um, there's, there's not one way to roll. And so we'll talk about rolling in our patient with the stroke, and, we'll talk, and then we'll talk about other patient populations. So what did I say about the scapula that we're concerned about? Protraction. 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 So the first thing we want to do, if the patient can actually bring their arm out to the side, we would certainly have them do that. But if they had neglect of that side, or if they had decreased sensation, or they had just couldn't move it, and they needed help, we would make sure we protract that side and brought the arm out to the side, right? And we're going to, um, we can bend, we can bend one leg or we can bend both legs. And then we can have <coughs> reach and roll, roll to the side. Pretty simple. So the key thing is protraction of the scapula and try to get the lower extremities into a weight bearing position. <coughs> Roll back. Rolling to the other side. Right? Is that the next? Yes. Mm -hmm. Rolling to an unaffected side. Dr. Sarson. Yes. When rolling them, do you want to bend the affected side or do you want to keep that one extended from what we were saying before on? Yeah, it really depends on what your next step is. So if my next step is to get up from bed, I'm going to have both legs flexed. If, if your next step is just for positioning, you would probably just bend <coughs> one leg and okay. roll. Because then you're in that position. Right. Right? That's okay. how you're thinking. Yes. Okay. So for this one, when we're rolling to her left side, her less affected side, we still want to think about this arm. Obviously, if she can move this arm, we want you to bring it across her body and roll. If she cannot, we want her to think about the arm and start from the, the shoulder to kind of put in protraction and then bring it across, and then um, we would bend this leg up, and then we would fold. So, and her help might be proximal if she has a really flaccid arm, and we want to make sure she's not going to be stuck in retraction. Okay? And then you can work on your positioning if that's the next activity that you We doing. just helped the distal arm if her that high level, they just keep holding this protraction and we'll move their distal So if they can, you know, with rehab, you just see what the patient can do on their own. It's kind of doing a task analysis. So if you were to roll on your side, pretend you're right hand and you're really flaccid, and don't use this, use this side 0%. So. <laughs> <laughs> she might flex that arm, you might pull with the left arm, and so you would see, okay, well, these are things I want to correct. I definitely want her to incorporate this side. We might have to bring it up and over and then hold it here. We would bring this leg on top, and then you would roll. Okay. Do, you, do you ever find that they can't actually grab their shoulder? And then you would have to, I, the main thing is I don't want to develop any shoulder pain here. Yeah. So in my assessment of her rolling, if she's not safe, like not doing it correctly and there's risk of it, and then I would document that she needs assistance with, with rolling at the scapula. Yeah. But I would want to teach her that. And so part of my instructions for bed mobility would be education. And hopefully she can, can learn that. And I would definitely instruct you in the importance of shoulder pain. You know, after your stroke, you know, just give you a pillow. These plastic pillows are very slippery, so that's a problem. So after a stroke, the stroke doesn't cause any shoulder pain. But as you get mobility and you're moving in and out of bed and transferring and rolling, your shoulder does have risk of developing pain. And some of the pain is related to if they develop decreased range of motion, especially of abduction and external rotation. And also if we give too much traction to that shoulder. Um, so if it's hanging off on the side of the wheelchair or hanging back when you're rolling. Um, so shoulder pain should be prevented. And I'm, I'm a physical therapist, but the care of the shoulder, I'm always looking at. When I stand my patients, I want that flaccid arm to be in weight-bearing if there's a weight-bearing tool, or they'll have an appropriate sling when they're up and walking. Because, you know, if they develop shoulder pain, it's going to really impede all their activities. 